Do you see that? <laughs> so what's going on here? So, wow. Oh my god. Oh. Uranus. Okay. <laughs> so it does not like the camera whatsoever. What the hell is going on? What the, do you go back in? It does not like us. It's, it's decided that uh, I don't like this fresh new world, so I'm going to go back in my egg. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> it's the ostrich. <laughs> Trust me, it's a lot easier than it looks. Whoa! What did you buy? <laughs> Talk about it. Just give me something. More reptile nightmares. Yeah? Okay. doing actually a live video. I'm actually just opening up some monitor eggs. We actually have some monitors hatching right now. So I'm looking at some black dragons and I'm looking at some, some tyrosinase or T-positive albino water monitors that are hatching. And I go through a couple of the different things, showing you the babies. Uh, sometimes it takes, right now it seems like it's taking like six and a half months, months for these guys to hatch. But I'm showing you uh, the techniques of actually how they're set up, then what they do immediately after they're uh, hatched before we begin the whole socialization process and also actually how I get into the eggs and why. And basically a couple of uh, noted points, what's important about when you actually do dicker with a, a very fragile egg like a monitor egg and what you can get away with and what you shouldn't get away because they are very different. Snake eggs and monitor eggs are actually very different and they're far less forgiving. Kevin, what are you showing me right now? What are, what I'm it? showing you baby monitors that were just born. These are actually born last night. I did actually put some of this on my Instagram story. Mm -hmm. Even more of God. So, so basically, this this clutch seems like it took uh, maybe more like six and a half months to hatch Donnie down here. These are the last two stragglers coming out of their eggs. So this is a tyrosinase positive. So this is a form of albinism. But these guys are born with a certain amount of melanin, and as they grow. They do not uh, continue to create melanin, so they turn, uh, they basically grow into this albino looking lizard. But they're very adorable. Look at that. I'm a show, show. Well, is there anything in that one, right? I don't really know. Hmm. No, there's nonsense. How come we don't cut open our monitor eggs? Tell me. We do actually cut Oh, we do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there goes that one. Well, I don't get into monitor eggs, and I, uh, it's different than, let's say, snake eggs. I don't actually go ahead of time. I actually wait for multiple animals in the clutch to actually start hatching, which is basically telling me, okay, you're ready to hatch. And I'll basically get into the egg, create an airspace, and then I pretty much just leave them alone. So unlike snake eggs, because these guys take so long to hatch, and the egg is so frail and fragile, I don't take those kind of liberties that I can do with the snake because uh, it's very different. And you know, these guys take six months plus where a snake egg in many cases takes 56, 60 days to hatch. Hi. Right. So I guess that six months really keeps newbies from just getting into this and Starting breeding project. Oh, huh? This is this is certainly not an easy one to hatch. Hi. You look good. So at this point, they think everything wants to murder them, including Jeremy, because he looks very bloodthirsty. He does. Okay. Let's go to the next one. So here we go. So we have some black dragon eggs. All right, look at that. That's an ostrich. Do you see that? So what's going on here? Tell me more. Uh, I want to go back in my... It did not... Spin it. What? Spin it. This animal did not like what was going on. <laughs> it went back into the egg. Is there any way you could pick that egg up and give me a good shot in your hand? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. It's going to be worth it. Ostrich monitor. 
Oh, wow. Oh my god. Oh, Uranus okay. So it does not like the camera whatsoever. There you go, there you go, exactly. And then get up to your face. I want to get a funny picture. This is funny. This is fucking great. Look in the camera. There you go, homie. Hold on. Get to this side here. What the hell is going on? What the, do you go back in? It does not like us. It's, it's decided that uh, I don't like this fresh new world, so I'm going to go back in my egg. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> it's the ostrich. That's funny. It was, it, 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 it was like, no. It was out. No. <laughs> I saw, I didn't like what I saw, and I went back. I can't. I, That's really I, funny. I can't, I can't blame it. Hi. Hi. Look at this. <laughs> oh, we're going to start the socialization. You got to make sure you touch the tail. Nothing is sacred. That's right. Ooh. Doesn't even know what's happening. <laughs> no. So this is a this head is black dragon. dragon. So see that melon in it. Over abundance of melon on that tail. Hi. All right. So convince you that the world is not out to get you. And here's one that just... Donnie, I could get into that egg if you want me to. I would love you to get in that egg. Do it. Okay, so generally, there's, uh, the blood vessels have all dropped in this egg, so this animal's already slit itself out. So like I was just mentioning, I, I generally don't go ahead of time and want to look in these eggs. I'll let them start slicing on us. I think something's really wrong. So in this case, everything looks pretty good. So, but that's basically an egg in the uh, process. I just lose my... So if I go, so one thing I do want to note is when I get into the monitor eggs, I don't want to. I'm, I'm doing. Oh, he's kind of. He's coming out. I don't want to make too big of a hole. What I don't want to do is introduce the idea that the animal now can just vacate its egg before it's absorbed all of its yolk. So. Uh, I basically want to, he's going to do something. He might get himself all the way in there and then turn around. <laughs> he's like, I fit in, oh, there he goes, oh, oh. Do you want him out? Does he want to come hey, he's, what are you doing? I don't, I don't know. He doesn't like what's out here. Hi, right, buddy. He is. You're good. You're good. Towel. Uh 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 he's he's doing the eventful turn. His foot's coming out the other side. <laughs> he's just all messed up, cool. man. Jeez. <laughs> One bad party. <laughs> this razor blade is not very so generally you don't have these ridiculous Don't worry, we have scalpels coming in. You finally did it. Well, I just, I like scissors. You're doing a great job at... That thing's got a long tail. Okay. Nope. All right, you just stay there like that. Let's get into an egg. Okay, so if I go into a monitor egg, it's a little bit different. Uh, this, this, so this egg right here is super saturated with uh, moisture and this is not always definitive what they actually look like when they're going to hatch so i take my razor i want to go pretty much parallel to the surface so i can tell you right off the bat everything's good in this egg because the albumin that's coming out there's no blood so sometimes oh there you go donnie figured it out so everything is is actually quite good in this egg so sometimes if you go into an egg and as I start slicing this, make this little opening and there's blood in there, sometimes that can actually be a really bad thing because the animal's already been trying to get out as it's uh, basically starving for oxygen. So now I'm going to open this a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create an airspace. So the albumin is incredibly thick. What's up with that? It's not like a That's, snake. It's not like a snake. You can almost cut it with your fingers. There is some thinner stuff in there. So, like I said, all I'm trying to do, I create 
and airspace. So see that little space in there? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I feel things are safe and I'm done dinkering with that animal. So one thing people might not know, as these little monitors are hatching, the, uh, the movements and activities of the hatching monitors uh, incites further uh, hatching. And this certain same kind of thing happens with uh, crocodilians. Uh, little babies will cause other ones to start hatching and then also the, the baby whelping or yelping or whatever you want to call it calls for the mom and then the mom comes over. Look at that. Here, put bring it up to your face, man. There you go, there you go, Kevin. Whee! Kevin does not like this. He's got it happy. There you go. Hi. I need puppets. I'm like, hey, look at the puppet. Look at me. I'm so cute. <laughs> Alright, continue. Because some of this is actually for purpose. And uh, once again, we're gonna go parallel. Very, very thin uh, as far as penetration. There's certainly, oh, there we go, he's coming out. He did it. Yeah. So we're gonna open this. Once again, this egg is, everything is wonderful. I know that that's a living neonate. And, oh, so there's that little bit of yolk. We wanna get him in the water as soon as possible. I've created my airspace. So there's a good chance that that animal uh, we'll be able to start breathing and so it is to be expected that I, I will cut through a blood vessel when I do this because the whole inside of the egg is riddled with blood vessels but all that is pretty much superficial so we drain this out feel very good we got a all right, so see right there, that's a black dragon. See how black that is? So the black dragon is the full representation of this mutation, which is hypermelanism. And it is an incomplete dominant. So when I call something incomplete dominant, it means that the heterozygous animal is visually different. So its phenotype, its visual look, indicates the genotype, which is the underlying genetics. So it is, it is basically the bleed through of, or half representation of the homozygous full expression black dragon. Okay, so that's a het right there. I'm not really doing this because I'm even interested in looking at what really, if one's a black dragon, one's not. I'm just doing this, I, I want these guys, the survivorship. So I'm doing this for that reason. So all these babies are alive. I know that. No blood. Everything's good. You know, one of these days I'm going to open up one of these eggs and something really crazy is going to come up. Like mm -hmm. something so crazy that I wasn't expecting it. So there's a black dragon. You say that. What does that mean? Well, let's say uh, uh, like a, um, a paradox. <laughs> What's a paradox? Tell me uh, more. Paradox has a pigmentation that would not be uh, what I'd be expecting. Ah. So let's say you hatch out an albino and there's paradox all over. I think that would really look great in a monitor. Uh, of course, you know, there's going to be ones that I'm, you know, like let's say hatching uh, T negatives, T positives, azantics, some of the combos, ivory, and all that stuff that eventually we'll be hatching. Uh, those are still, even though I might not know what, let's say, what a baby ivory looks like, you know, white monitor, I still have an indication in my mind, but uh, what's going to eventually probably happen is because I hatched out so many monitors, one day I'm just going to get sent for a, a loop and hatch out something really unexpected. So these guys, now I will leave these eggs as I'm doing. So see that thinner fluid? Mm. That's beyond all that thick fluid. So I remember folks, I was noticing in our ball python cutting video where people were getting confused with, between albumin, which is basically, think about this is uh, the carrying fluid. This is actually what suspends the developing uh, embryo in the egg. The yolk is actually what supplies uh, the developing embryo with the nutrition and the building blocks to actually form a complete little mini dragon inside this egg. So you've got to remember Yolk and albumin are two different things. 
So this animal will fairly uh, tolerate me draining out the albumin without uh, causing uh, anything that I would indicate as a, a problem. So if I take this out and we visit our little baby here. So this little guy, he might try to bite me. Oh. So very, very scared. So I want to be very uh, careful with this baby. So this baby has some yolk in his, in his belly and sometimes they do come out like this. So immediately what I'm going to do with this animal is because I want this animal to absorb all the yolk into its stomach. And what it does is it also cinches the muscle around where the umbilicus is, which is basically this animal's belly button. And that little muscle will constrict and tighten up and basically keep the contents of that yolk and stuff inside the animal. And if we don't do that, or if we weaken it, we can get something called a herniated umbilicus. So the best, safest thing right now for this little guy, because we disturbed it, I will put the lid on it, we'll keep this guy quiet in the incubator and give him a day. And he'll pull that in there and get all the nutrients that it actually needs. All right guys, so today we're also filming again live. So if you wanna see our next live filming, please uh, join our twitch.tv audience and look for new reptile distributors there. And please join that platform because we're trying to do a lot of uh, live streaming there. And that way our audience can actually talk to us and we really appreciate the support because we get awesome support. We have very, very dedicated fans. I gotta turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on! <laughs>